evolution. I only have 10 minutes, so I'll uh, go through the basic concepts that we are working on. So money is ever evolving, uh, you know, from salt mines, from uh, rye stones, to the clay tablets, to the gold and coins, to the security issues borne by the government, sovereign based uh, uh, currencies. So if we see the last 2,000 years of money, the history of evolution money, it's always evolving. But contrary to biological descent of evolution, it always evolves in big jumps. So you have salt, and automatically in the sudden, then you know you, you, you get a gold. And then from gold, you get a paper currency. So it's not a very, very gradual, uh, 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 a, a increase of, of evolution. So that's the difference. The ever connected world of today's is now at a point where it's asking for another currency. Uh, uh, all of the basic required ingredients that were supportive for, support, uh, for fiat are quite, quite working against it. And we'll, 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 we'll see it how, how, how it's happening. So let me start with the story of One-Eyed King. We all heard the story in our childhood that there was a town of blind people and there was a king who has one eye. So why he was a king? Because he was the best to survive, to navigate his business. And he, since he's going to survive, he's more able to likely to pass this uh, to their, uh, his offsprings. And then that gene becomes the king. So that particular trait is guaranteeing his success and survival. So evolution is generally uh, uh, is the change in the characteristics of a species over several generations and relies on the process of natural selection. And we'll talk about what natural selection is. But one uh, problem with evolution is whenever we talk about evolution, we always think of better. That's not true. Evolution is agnostic to progress. It is quite blind. So it's only optimizing you for the environment you are living in. It can be good, it can be bad. It can be good now, it can be bad 10 years later. So natural selection is a process by which specific traits become more or less common in population over time. Result of the relative success or failures. So when we talk about variations, this is more kind of undirect and blind. It's just mutation happens, something got changed. We are not sure it's good or bad or what. It's quite undirected. Inheritance, on the other end, is quite directed. You get the best genes that help you survive in the environment from your parents. So natural selection is equal to Adam Smith's invisible hand uh, that's directing uh, the direction. Because if you are not getting the good genes, you are not going to survive in the future, and you are going to die off uh, uh, in, in, in due time. So this is the, what invisible hand is working in, in, in financial sector as well. When we talk about survival of the fittest and blockchain, one of the problems I have is people say, OK, that's the first in trend. That comes first. So there's guarantees for their survival. And that idea sounds pretty cool. So but this idea sounds pretty cool, and the first in trends cannot be the guarantee for survival. Right now, whenever we talk about cryptocurrencies, the only thing that we consider is the market cap capitalization. Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus Monero, Dash, and everything else. A strength is not always the determining factor for your survival. Sometimes it's, it's work against you. So for example, we have the examples of Blockbusters, Toys R Us, and Radio Shack. They were very, you know, giants. What happened? They cannot adapt to the environment, and they vanish away. Bitcoin, by the way, has been forecasted to fail 236 times, uh, and it, it, it still didn't. So chain has the internal clock of this 10 minutes. I call it the, uh, uh, their own, uh, own system of creation. While the GitHub community is equal to our immune system. So whatever happening in you know, viruses and, and, and disease is, is supporting us, is, is, is killing those viruses and it making sure that whole species, cryptocurrency as a species, would survive. Some species, when they divide into groups, they have a better chance of survival. So for example, uh, uh, Darwin's finches, they have different kind of peaks. So like 10 different finches have 10 different kind of beats, peaks, and that's make them good to survival. Some other species might go isolated, spread thin, and die. So for example, if we have a Bitcoin uh, or chain network and we divide it to 10 folks, and every single chain will get one-tenth of the hashing power, they are vulnerable to attacks. So this is the concept of genetic camera that uh, we have in biology as well. So environment, we need to be considered environment. It's very, very crucial for this. It plays a very important role. So when we talk about the nature, we always talk about the environment. So where are you from? So for example, you know, I say my age is 40 years old. So where are you from? If I'm from Japan, yeah, that's quite ordinary. If I'm from Somalia, man, that's extraordinary. Their average is 39 years of age. So always depend where you live in, or what's, where you eat, where you do your business. And money equals to, like biology is a historical science. You always need to have roles, participant, who is doing what, who is selling what, uh, what are the interest rates, and everything else. So if you remove that environment from the money, it doesn't make much sense uh, uh, after all. 
when you talk about blockchain environment, it's the government, it's the companies, it's the corporates, the miners, the participants. So when we talk about evolution, we need to consider everyone's role, all of the stakeholders, to create that environment. Adoption is simply the ability to change. Sometimes, species' ability to remain unchanged is what required for their survival and for their growth. So whenever we talk about evolution, we always talk about change. Sometimes we need to resist uh, segwit 2 or something like that, that you know, we cannot change. This is the right environment. This is the right ingredients and traits we need to survive. And this is very, very important when you talk about evolution and, uh, and evolving of uh, cryptocurrencies. Now, in the nature, something very strange happens. We call them ecosystem engineers. So we have large bisons. They go roam around the earth, they do a lot of damage, but that damage is very, very good for small animals, for weeds, for plants. Beavers make the bridge, and that bridge may makes possible for other small species to survive. We have the wood uh, woodpeckers, they make the holes in the trees, and that hole is being used by other animals. So in the nature, we have these interconnected uh, species, they are supporting each other when it comes to food chain, when it comes to shelter, when it comes to survival. So make increasing the survival of other species because of one species. Uh, we are working on those, those ones when we can talk to the interoperability, when Bitcoin's network can talk to Ethereum, Ethereum can talk to some other blockchains. Atmic swap is one, one, uh, uh, one work in this direction. So what are the traits and features if we talk about the Bitcoin and blockchain DNA that we like to see uh, in, the, in the whole systems? Clearly verifiable, uh, simple you know, money traits, fungible, portable, divisible, scars, censorship resistant, one might say, and programmable. Why, why we need programmability in money? Money so far, historically, historically, is a very, very dumb construct. I give this 500 franc to somebody, Money doesn't know where I'm spending it. I can be use it for pornography, for child abuse, for sex trafficking, anything else. Money doesn't know, and it doesn't complain. When you make the money programmable, you can have some kind of set of belief set or, or some set rules that money would not spend to this particular thing. So if I'm going to spend this money for drug abuse or from sex trafficking, money would complain, call 911 or you know, call the FBI, that you know, this guy is spending me somewhere wrong. So we have a concept of easement in the real estate, where we say, okay, this plot is only for orphanage, or for schools, or for mosque. Now, you cannot use this plot for commercial purposes, right? It's for public garden or for municipality. We can have the same thing in the money. So I'm giving the tax to my government with the condition that government cannot use my tax money to wage a war to another country. As soon as government decide to do it, money would not go. Money would not transfer. Money would complain by itself. So this is the programmability of money that we are talking about. Decentralized. All of the genes are decentralized as well. So people are replicating and reproducing in Australia, totally different from the people who are replicating in Pakistan or in, in, in USA. So they have different kind of traits and DNA systems. So D DNA and biological evolution is decentralized as well. Then we need evolving, something need to be changed, need to be adapted. Unforgeable costliness. That's the cost to mine a coin equals to buying a new one. You know, you have to get the, all of the Haitian powers to corrupt something, we would buy the, uh, buy the new coins. Scalable, clearly we need it, security, privacy, interoperability, and user friendliness. So these are the few features that we like to see in the next currency or in the existing ones. So there's a chart, this is not by me, this is by some, somebody else. He compared the gold, fiat, and cryptocurrencies, and clearly the government base is went out of favor for, uh, for all of the DLTs and cryptocurrencies. We need digitalization and we need a smart to be able to program that currency. We need to talk about extinction as well, and it's very, very important. So when the KT event happened, all of the traits that were good for dinosaurs becomes very, very negative for them. So they were huge, so they need more food and more oxygen and more everything. Because of their strength, they are ruling the world and nobody can do nothing. When the asteroid hit and then we knew all of a sudden got blocked by, uh, by the ashes, there was less oxygen and less food. And guess what? All of the ingredients, they were supportive of dinosaurs, they were ready, they were flourishing them, start working against them and they got extinct. This is what happening in fiat as well. And this KT event has already started with the Lehman Brothers uh, bankruptcy and the financial crisis of 2008. So all of the things that were supporting the fiat are kind of working against it. Two primary reasons for extinction. Increased competition and change in environment. And we clearly see there's increase in competition, blockchain, domain, and fintech, and the change in environment as well. Average life of fiat currency is 27 years. Mainly, we go extinct because of war, because of independence, new country, monetary reforms, and hyperinflation. You have, we have the cases of Venezuela, we have the cases of Zimbabwe, uh, uh, Greece recently, uh, India demonetization not as well. 
So where we are going with all of those things? So these are uh, what I'm thinking. So number one, we are going towards crypto cartels. So think of a computer program that would block somebody's files and get the money thrown in somewhere. Okay, now it will use that money to hire programmer, freelancers to improve its code and go on and on. And we, we, we are already seeing uh, uh, some of the incidents of, uh, of something like that. And it will become a very, very big, would be very, very hard to control. Money will come with its own consciousness. So money will have its own belief set. What is good, what is not? Where should I go to spend, where I shouldn't be spending? But the problem now is that we researchers are working on what kind of belief set we should give it to the currency. Christianity, Jews, Judaism, Islam. What about the general social beliefs? Okay, social belief, then how it's going to evolve? Are they going to learn itself? So I have the money in my pocket and I want to buy a BMW. I go to the car showroom and my money would say, okay, you cannot buy because there are people dying in Yemen and Somalia. So you shouldn't be, you know, buying that extraordinary car. You know, you should go for any other, you know, buy a Ford or something. So I have the money I cannot use because my money would not allow me to use it. So that's very, very tricky. That if we want to give conscience to the money, make it programmable, uh, have its own belief set, what kind of belief set we are talking about? Is it going to be evolved? If evolved, who is going to control it? Who is going to vet it? Liquid democracy. The problem with democracy all over the world is if I give the vote, I give the vote, and I do not know what happened to my vote. Number one, I do not know is it get counted or not. If it get counted, who is it got counted, or corruption and all of those things. And even if it get counted to the guy that I give, I cannot do nothing for four years. What about if I give the vote to a particular candidate, and then whatever he want to do next, I can withdraw my vote any time in those four years. After two months, I do not like his policies. I said, okay, you cannot do this particular thing. If you are going, I'm going to withdraw the vote. If enough people withdraw the vote, whole government will collapse, and then we have new election or something. This is what the concept we call liquid democracy. With everything else open, if you learn from the biology, 90% of the cryptocurrencies and everything is going to go extinct, and 10% will going to survive. But those 10%, like, you know, uh, uh, dot-com uh, bubble bust. So everything goes, 80, lose their 85% of value, but then we got Google and Amazon and Facebook. Those, the ones that are going to survive, will be huge and will change everything for, uh, uh, forever, I guess. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please. Okay, no questions. Thank you very much. Sure. So you suggested uh, programmable money in the sense that it can tell what it's being used to be, what it's used for. Um, I can't seem to f like at least picture that in my head that it can tell what it's being used for because on, there's two ways around it. One, uh, the private key could also just be handed over, and that's one way of transferring that without any record on a blockchain. And the other is that you know the address that it's sent to would need to be designated in some way to be affiliated with that type of activity. And so what would determine that to be an accept acceptable attribution? I guess on some kind of account property attribution, but then that can also be an issue of like, so, who gets to say that? Yeah, this, this is what we're working on. That, you know, for example, we have the AML and KYC laws. So when we transfer the money, we tell them this is going for, for family, for personal remittance and what and what not. So we can check, we, we can tick mark or, no, or we can check particular thing. But again, who is going to verify it? If I'm saying I'm this, sending this money for orphanage, while in reality this money is for a drug cartel, who would know? But, you know, then, then we have the blacklist and the whitelist and all, all those sort of things that we're uh, currently using in the regular fintech system. Okay, guys, thank you. Thank you very much.